Whether for reward or immunity, the challenges have formed a fundamental dynamic to each and every Survivor episode. While there are certainly many that can be critiqued, I instead want to look at the five best ones and the history surrounding them to outline why they're so incredible. So if you enjoy this video at any moment, make sure to leave a like, and if this video hits 250 likes, I'll do a part two. Okay? In an ironic turn of events, the first challenge on this list featured in the very first season of the show. Hands on Hard Idol. Borneo is such a strange season for me, as it has some really creative challenges and then others that nearly drown Jeff. While Hands on a Hard Idol is extremely simple, it's why it's so effective. The semantics of this challenge have changed per season, however generally contestants stand on pegs, they have to put their hand on a cylindrical structure, and the last one left standing ends up winning the challenge. This concept, while very basic, is secretly genius. Unlike most challenges that favour a certain body type, this one is perhaps the most neutral in concept. It doesn't matter if you're muscular or lean, a man or a woman, all individuals can and have won. This provides a juxtaposition to prior challenges that give an edge to contestants that are better physically or better at solving puzzles, especially accentuated by the fact this is always the final challenge in the seasons it has appeared on. All this challenge asks is who wants it more, and the winner is the one with the most grit. Plus, I always love the childlike arguments that devolve from it, such as in Borneo or All Stars. Off. I think that's that, really. Yeah. Jenna, you lifted your foot. I lifted my foot? You lifted your back foot. I thought I had the fun of my foot on. This challenge also has some interesting history surrounding it, as the winner of this challenge has never won the game in its four appearances in Survivor US, and it also was the first time a challenge throw was executed. This was through the now infamous Richard Hatch, using it as his game winning move to get Rudy's swing vote, and was probably the only time in Survivor history the producers had no idea why a contestant made a strategic decision. To my knowledge, this has been the longest standing challenge in English speaking Survivor history, being used in the first ever season, and even reappearing 23 years later as the final challenge in Survivor UK. Therefore, this challenge is a timeless classic, and despite unfortunately being seemingly retired now in Survivor US, it appearing on Australian Survivor or reboots of Survivor UK plus Survivor South Africa is very likely in the future. I'm never normally a fan of stacking challenges as a lot of them come off as repetitive to be brutally honest. However, there is one exception for me and that's the Domino Effect Challenge, but also has some other names like Backed Up, High Step and Stack. In this challenge, contestants must place one domino at a time on a board, avoiding a trip wires, and then knock the line of dominoes over to win immunity. Its success in the franchise has been evidenced by the fact it is one of the very few challenges to have featured in literally every English-speaking survivor. Although one small knock, excuse the pun, is that some international versions like AU All-Stars in New Zealand Thailand have blocks that were very sensitive to the wind, making a tribe or individual that was making good progress lose some of it through no fault of their own. Although this also raises an interesting juxtaposition between this challenge and other balancing ones. Usually in those challenges, if you quote unquote feel, your entire tower falls. Hey Albert, drop your stack and come pick up my pieces. I'm, I'm in a pretty decent spot right now. Hold on. Drop your damn stack and pick up my pieces, I'm gonna beat you. Although in this challenge, usually hitting the tripwire only means a few dominoes fall off, allowing you to regain first place and stay in the competition. It's a fun challenge where the placements constantly flip back and forth, with the motion of the dominoes knocking one another over, just being generally satisfying. It's also incredibly versatile, being used as one portion of a multi-stage challenge and immunity challenge, but is also featured in multiple Redemption Island duels. This video is sponsored by Survivor Castaway Island, a game that lets you play Survivor from the comfort of your own home. Available on Xbox One, Xbox Series X, PS4, PS5, Nintendo Switch, Steam and the Epic Games Store. Do you have what it takes to be the sole survivor, or will you be snuffed before the finishing line? Purchase the game for yourself, and see if you have what it takes to earn the crown. 
Survivor production often has the philosophy of having challenges that allow for the most well-rounded to win, although unfortunately this mentality of having physical dexterity and then puzzle is typically reserved for the tribe format, where I feel it is less effective. After all, that's more so testing which tribe has individuals with the better specific skill set for each section, compared to having the most well-rounded individuals. This is where Out on a Limb comes in. This challenge is a massive obstacle course, featuring a selection of mini challenges the contestants must will complete for parts of their puzzle. Then with all their puzzle pieces, they must complete a puzzle. Also just a quick announcement, I know that there's some people on the channel that think they're subscribed to me because YouTube keeps pushing my content to them but they're not actually subscribed so if you could do me a favour and just check to make sure that subscribe button is white, that would be a big favour. Nevertheless, in my opinion, this challenge is constant entertainment. You're seeing one person awkwardly dangling one moment, while the next second another person is rampantly bouncing up and down. This challenge type is incredible, and one of the very few that tests contestants on lots of varying skills, making the immunity winner feel very worthy of the title. Plus, there are lots of successful strategies that have been utilised in this challenge, such as Kelly Wentworth in Cambodia completing the more difficult sections first to avoid a pile up later on. And she won. However, the most iconic iteration of this challenge is Survivor South Pacific, which encapsulates the idea once again you've got to be good at most things to succeed. Ozzy, as per usual, was dominating the physical portion of the challenge, but struggled in the flower power puzzle, allowing Sophie to come from behind and win. Even over 10 years later, this remains as one of the greatest comebacks in the challenge. The thing I love about this challenge is the versatility as, yeah, sure, it's generally the same, but you can have it on land, in water, and use a variety of puzzles, so quite frankly, it never gets boring. This challenge also almost always either features as the immunity challenge or the penultimate one, with it being used as the penultimate one more so nowadays. I think it's a fantastic way to encapsulate the most well-rounded person winning, a mentality survivor often likes to pitch within this presentation of a challenge. Once again, this challenge has had lots of different winners, although unlike the hands-on hard idol that tests very few skills, this one is more so because it tests so many. We've had big guys and petite women win, as well as Mike Turner, the oldest of the contestants, being the last person to win this challenge, so shout out to him. Although honestly I love a good blindfold challenge, and while I was tempted to just include all blindfold challenges in the discussion because, I mean, who doesn't enjoy contestants randomly bumping into things? But to be fair I whittled it down and went with a blind maze challenge. Most maze-like challenges in Survivor are, um, how do I put this, not interesting? I'm not sure. Usually they feature contestants following one another, so they themselves don't end up lost. However, if you remove sight, it makes it a lot more interesting. Now contestants have to rely on their spatial awareness, using braille insignia signs in order to direct contestants, which is another cool feature. There are also some other cool aspects of this challenge, like the contestants having to collect elements in both the Amazon plus Heroes vs Villains challenges and using a drawbridge mechanic in Fiji. Also bonus points for season 20 and 30, literally using the immunity necklace as the obtainable win con in their version of the challenge. It's a nice feature. Despite being only used four times in Survivor US, it's been one of the challenges used in both Jenna Maraska and Mike Holloway winning their seasons, on the back of winning out as well as protecting Yao Man. It's also potentially the first nail biting challenge, as in Heroes vs Villains all of Jerry, Parvati and Russell were literal feet from one another, making it as the final immunity challenge all the better. While this challenge isn't seen a whole lot, especially in the modern day, I feel like this challenge is one that is helped by appearing so sparsely, and it is a nice change of pace from the other individual immunity challenges accompanying it. You know you designed a good immunity challenge when even the contestants after finishing are saying how fun it was. <laughs> that was fun! <laughs> Very fun! But the final challenge on this list is a pretty obvious one. The auction. Or is it? By technicality, the auction is a reward challenge. It gives the contestants rewards, and even features during the slots you would typically see a reward. But is gambling predisposed income on plates of food really a reliable definition of a challenge? If it is, then hey, you have your number one, and check out this video to see what makes the perfect survivor auction for me, but I feel for this specific video, 
that wouldn't be a very good number one choice. Instead, I want to talk about Dragon the Dragon, an absolutely incredible multi-stage team challenge that in my opinion is non-stop action. Its origins were from Survivor Kagayan, where most good things came from, and featured an obstacle course using a cart. Unlike most parts of the multifaceted challenges that are dystopian with no synergy between one another, this is just one massive fluid challenge. Each tribe is assigned a cart and used as a vehicle throughout the entire challenge, making it easy to understand understand. You have to get your keys to unlock crates to put into your cart, but then you have to dismantle your entire cart to put it back together again on the other side. It's a great challenge that utilizes teamwork skills and resource management in one compact bundle. Plus, because the challenge is designed around a core concept, it allows the challenge team to integrate more hero portions into the challenges than others. There are people assigned to get keys, people assigned to unlock the chests, get rid of the roadblocks, and then of course create the puzzle at the end. However, there still is that team aspect of having to navigate a heavy cart through the course. Despite most new challenges typically being quote unquote one and done, where they appear on their initial season and then fade out, this one has been pretty consistently used since its inception, showcasing this challenge's merit. While this list has obvious bias, I'd love to hear your lists down below. Subscribe if you made it this far, come on, your Northern Irish boy deserves it. And make sure to check out my top 5 villains in Modern Survivor video. I've heard all the cool kids have watched it, so make sure to join the fun as we discuss castaways in that video. Nevertheless, have a good day, and peace!